what if someone wishes us a happy birthday? Though we don't celebrate birthdays, what should we respond with? Is it okay to wish them a happy birthday if they celebrate birthdays, even though we don't? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, we have to understand why aren't we supposed to celebrate birthdays. Uh, because the Prophet ﷺ ordered his companions to limit their celebrations and festivals to the two main Eids, Eid al-Fitri and Eid al-Adha. And obviously we have a weekly Eid which is our Friday, the, the greatest day of the week. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that in the course of uh, prohibiting them from celebrating other festivals that they used to celebrate and commemorate before Islam. So he said, لَقَدْ أَبْدَلَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِهِمَا عِيدُ الْفِطْرِ وَعِيدُ الْأَضْحَى These two days are the greatest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you these two Eids, a replacement of any other Eid, which they used to celebrate before that. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned in a sound hadith against following the footsteps of the people of the scripture and copying and imitating them. <coughs> There are numerous hadith in, in this regard. He said in one hadith, <coughs> لَتَتَّبِعُنَّ سُنَنَ مَنْ قَبْلَكُمْ شِبْرًا بِشِبْرًا وَذِرَاعًا بِذِرَاعًا حَتَّى لَوْ دَخَلُوا جُحْرَ ضَبٍ لَدَخَلْتُمُوهُ وَرَأَهُ They said, Ya Rasulullah, you mean the Jews and the Christians? He said, and who else? Basically, the Prophet ﷺ prophesies that uh, his ummah or some of his ummah are going to follow the same footsteps of the people of the scripture who deviated from their sharia. Uh, and a hand length by hand length, an arm length by an arm length, to the extent that even have they entered a hole of a lizard that were going to enter the same hole. Uh, this is a metaphor that explains that some of the Muslim Ummah are going to imitate exactly the same behavior and practices of Ahlul Kitab. So he warned us against that. And he prohibited at tashabbuh which is to do anything that will make you look like the people of Ahlul Kitab. Whether the ibadat or the adat, the acts of worship or uh, the traditions. So especially whenever there is a practice that has a religious origin, then we're not supposed to commemorate it, we're not supposed to participate in it, in it, not even by congratulating. If there is a holiday which is originally has a religious background and is celebrated based on that, then we're not supposed to celebrate it not, nor congratulate them uh, with these occasions. Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas Eve, uh, Valentine Day, things of this nature. And birthdays, birthday parties, have nothing to do with Islam and Muslim. These are our Christian traditions, and we, or some of us, copied them in this regard. Our best role model was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and is Prophet Muhammad, and will continue to be Prophet Muhammad, insha'Allah, even in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this regard, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ This verse of Surah Tawbah and the other verse of Al-Ahzab which is لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ أَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرٌ The second verse means the best example on the day of judgment, if you believe in Allah and in the last day. And the first one of Surah At-Tawbah says, there indeed has come to you a messenger from amongst yourselves. Azizun alayhim anittum. It grieves him that you should receive any injury or hardship. Harisun alaykum. He's very anxious over you to be rightly guided. Bil mu'mineen ra'uf rahim For the believers, he is full of pity and mercy. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If there is any good thing, whether with, is it worldly, or religious, or cultural, the Prophet ﷺ would definitely have taught it to us. He would not conceal anything that is useful for us, especially if it is known in other nations. Why would the Prophet ﷺ conceal it if he wishes best for his ummah? Second, 
Is there any greatest, a greater event in the entire life than the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Obviously not. Yet, it was never reported that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam celebrated his own birthday. Nor was it reported that any of his companions after his demise have celebrated or commemorated his birthday. As a matter of fact, the history says that the tarikh or dating uh, our history according to a beginning date was a matter of debate between the companions. Umar ibn Khattab consulted the great companions when he was a Khalifa as which event should they take as the beginning of the tarikh, of the dating of this ummah. So they had the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But that was debated because some people said he was born on the 9th of Rabi al-Awwal, some said on the 12th, the date was not confirmed. But definitely it was on Monday. And uh, some people said the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi And they looked at the history and they figured out that the greatest event happened after the Prophet ﷺ was appointed as a prophet because that too was suggested as a date. It was the event of Al-Hijrah. That's why our calendar is a Hijri based calendar. And this is a general consensus amongst the companions of the time. May Allah be pleased with them. Why I mentioned the last point? Because some people say, you know, yeah, it is true that Prophet Muhammad did not celebrate his own birthday because he was the most humble man. He would not brag about his birth or himself or anything. He was a very humble man. But it is his right upon us to show love and respect by commemorating his birth. I say, okay, that makes sense. But guess what? We do not pass religious ruling based on whether it makes sense or not. Because your sense is different than my sense. So it is based on the Sharia, whether it is uh, uh, Sharia based or not. Does it, have a, does it have a reference or not? And that's why I say, well, Umar ibn Khattab loved the Prophet sallallahu more than any of us. Abu Bakr Siddiq donated his entire wealth for the sake of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And when he was asked, Abu Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, Ya Abu Bakr, what did he leave for your family? He literally brought his entire position, all his money. He said, I saved for them Allah and his messenger. Well, I don't think any of us loved the Prophet ﷺ a fraction of Abu Bakr's love, or Umar, or Uthman, or even at tabiin Yet, it never crossed the mind of any of them. Somebody would raise another objection and say, well, wait a minute. You said that the Prophet ﷺ never celebrated his own birthday. Similarly, the companions never did. I said, true. I said, but isn't it true that the Prophet ﷺ used to fast on Mondays and Thursdays? And when he was asked about fasting on a regular basis, voluntary fasting on these two days, he said, Monday, a day on which I was born, and Thursday, the day on which our deeds are being presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True. You see, he celebrated his birthday by fasting, but fasting what? He used to fast on every single Monday, not once a year, on a particular date, the date on which he was born. So if you like to fast Mondays and Thursday, this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a mean of giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are two blessed days. But commemorating one day as an anniversary, or as a birthday,